Okay. Um, so essentially, I wanted to um, talk a bit about content negotiation and client hints. Um, I've been, this is a project that I've been involved with for uh, many years. I've also been involved with the working group for many years, but for some reason, uh, those two uh, worlds never collided. Uh, so I wanted to uh, just talk to the working group about uh, that, uh, that uh, feature and content negotiation in general and yeah, and see what you all think. So try to gather opinions. Uh, so um, content negotiation is a thing. Uh, and by content negotiation, I mean uh, responses that uh, the server uh, adapts to specific uh, characteristics of the request that go beyond just its URL. Uh, we have multiple headers in, in multiple request headers that are being used for content negotiation. Uh, we have accept, uh, which is uh, essentially sending out the supported file types and enabling the server to serve uh, different file types for different browsers, depending on uh, their support levels. Uh, accept encoding that accepts different uh, uh, compression uh, algorithms on the wire. And we talked about that a bit in the context of that standard the other day. Uh, we have the user agent string, which is, yeah, uh, a very uh, heavy hammer that is being used for content negotiation for many, many different things. And yeah, is typically not, uh, I, I'm not a huge fan. Um, and uh, finally, there's also accept language, which uh, adapts uh, the, the site's content, content uh, to the user's language when one is set. Um, I may be leaving out uh, a few here, but I, I think I covered all of them, but I may be leaving out things. Uh, there's also other uh, forms of content negotiation that are um, geographically based or uh, not uh, like based on other characteristics such as, uh, you know, uh, the user is coming from Europe, so let's send them to the whatever, uh, you know, a, a different page with a different, uh, like, with different characteristics. Those are out of scope for this discussion. But yeah, it, it's a thing that happens. At the same time, passive fingerprinting is also a thing. And all that information, or a lot of the information that uh, those um, headers expose is also information that can be used for passive fingerprinting by uh, splitting out users and you know, enabling uh, servers to tell those users apart without having to do anything about it. So the servers can just observe the information being sent to them and then uh, use that to fingerprint users. And that is opposed to active fingerprinting, uh, which is a detectable act where the server actively asks for information uh, and for example, if a server asks for a lot of uh, information that can be used for fingerprinting, that is something that security and privacy researchers can spot. That is something that browsers can spot and do something about. So um, yeah, uh, passive fingerprinting is, uh, yeah, bad. Uh, so uh, that brings us to client hints. Client hints is essentially a content negotiation mechanism that uh, significantly limits the amount of information sent by default and significantly, uh, therefore, limits uh, passive fingerprinting and asks for specific server opt-in for information it needs in order to perform uh, content negotiation. Uh, that has a privacy advantage. It also has a um, correctness advantage of uh, tying the information the server needs to the information that it requests rather than using various proxies uh, to as make assumptions that may or may not be correct. Um, 
The essential mechanism for client hints is the client sends out a request. The request, the initial request to the server uh, doesn't contain any of the high entropy uh, client hints. Uh, it may contain some low entropy hints that are sent by default. Uh, the server then asks for specific high entropy hints. Uh, one example is, uh, you know, the vice memory here. Uh, as a response header, there are many others. We'll talk about them in a bit. Uh, that uh, opt-in is persistent for the browser session. Uh, and then following requests uh, contain those uh, requested hints and, yeah, and send out those values to the server, and the server can do uh, content adaptation based on that. That works great for sub-resources. It works less great for navigation responses. Uh, it is not sent to uh, cross-origin contexts uh, by default, and nor to cross-origin uh, in general. And sending those hints to cross-origin, I should have written it down, but it requires uh, permission policy-based uh, delegation uh, to specific Cross, uh, so the top level origin needs to delegate that information to um, other origins if it wishes to do that. Um, then uh, we have, in order to resolve the uh, very first request issue, uh, we have a pro related proposal that's called Client Hints Reliability, uh, where we have a parallel critical CH response header uh, that essentially says uh, that the origin prefers a redirect over uh, getting the response wrong. That is unimportant. Like, it's not something you would want to do for optimization purposes, uh, but it is something that is important uh, for correctness issues. And uh, for example, for uh, like this is uh, with the user agent uh, bits where. Uh, Origin, like more servers can send uh, the wrong content. If they get it wrong, uh, they want to uh, be sure that, you know, that they avoid correctness issues even in the price of a redirect. And then uh, the a second proposal uh, called ALPS and an accept CH HTTP frame, uh, which is essentially uh, performing the client hints opt in as part of the H2 uh, or H3 connection establishment phase, uh, effectively stealing an RTT and avoiding uh, the need for a redirect. So performing that opt-in before the very first request is ever sent. Um, so in terms of privacy considerations, uh, information exposed with client hints is information that should be uh, regarded as active information exposure uh, because it requires an opt-in uh, and the browser can also refuse to send that information or uh, um, yeah, lie in weird cases, although that's not something that's currently happening. Um, yeah, so the at least the high entropy hints are active information. The low entropy hints continue to be passive information, but it is... Uh, information that is um, useful or uh, like uh, low entropy enough uh, for to, to justify that. Um, it, one uh, principle we kept is that we don't expose anything that is not already exposed otherwise, either through JavaScript APIs, through HTML, for example, uh, source set, or through CSS, for example, media queries. Uh, and there are a bunch of uh, client hints features that rely on that infrastructure. Uh, for responsive images, we have uh, information about the screen's DPR, uh, so device pixel ratio, uh, viewport width, uh, viewport height, which is a recent uh, addition still being experimented with as far as I remember, and the width of uh, an element that is uh, specific to images uh, in when certain conditions apply. Um, we have the user agent client hints uh, that ex 
essentially break apart the current information exposed by the user agent string into uh, various fail fields. Uh, some have more entropy than others, and those fields can then uh, be requested and potentially get uh, get that information or not, depending on whether it's already exposed in the user agent string or not. Um, Network information is something we talked about a few weeks back. Uh, Thomas uh, has a proposal to revamp those values, uh, but right now it exposes effective connection type, download, and RTT. And uh, we have a few more uh, device memory, which is which the working group is working on, uh, save data, and prefers caller scheme that Thomas will talk about in a bit. Um, and then finally, uh, I've been thinking about the accept header and ways to fix that. Uh, um, right now, accept is getting longer and longer as we add uh, various format support. Uh, and that results in uh, cores restriction violations. Uh, it just in terms of its length, because uh, cores has a length like per header length uh, restriction. Uh, it's also bad. So for one recent example that came up, uh, font content negotiation typically happens uh, in the CSS itself, because for different fonts, you need to change the CSS that uh, calls into them. Uh, at the same time, there are um, properties that want to be able to have dedicated uh, dedicated CSS per uh, font technology, for example. So uh, for uh, like new and exciting font formats, they want different CSS and that can get hefty and they don't want to deliver that unless needed. Uh, but there is no reasonable support uh, for accept uh, and like, the font formats uh, supported by the browser is not something that the request for the CSS knows by its accept header because uh, it's not CSS support, it's font support. So it's indirect and therefore not exposed in accept right now. Uh, and it would be wasteful to just expose it for all accept headers or all accept headers with the, for CSS. It would have like, or at least it would be weird. And it may be better to try to fix that with client hints where the server explicitly indicates which uh, format uh, it is interested in supporting. And then the client indicates that support or lack thereof uh, through client hints. That's just a thought for the future. Um, so essentially, I wanted to talk about this, uh, like, present all that to the group, uh, give this high-level overview, uh, and then ask whether do you all think that the infrastructure is something that's useful and something uh, we should consider adopting as a group, uh, whether any of the specific features uh, are things that may be interesting or useful, and generally just gather your thoughts. So I will stop talking now. and. Uh, we can move on to the discussion. And this 